Hey, I'm Noodle Yeti, and this is the seventh part in a series I'm doing where I build a city called Westdale. This episode is going to be primarily focused on just adding a lot of detail, things like vegetation, rocks, assets, trees, you name it. I just want to add all of that into all of the kind of empty spaces. And the first place I'd like to add stuff into is actually this nature reserve. I kind of want this one to be reflective of what's on the other side of the train tracks over here with all the redwoods, boreal pines, eastern cottonwoods, things like that. I'd like to put a bunch of those in here. This is I, my intention with this wasn't to have it be a nature preserve. I just wanted kind of a park that allowed people to camp in. And I wanted that in between these two neighborhoods here, but we had to use the nature preserve to do that. So yeah, I'm going to get into making this look a lot prettier and I guess, I guess I'll shut up now and get to it. Alright, so I finished this park here. It's a place that we allow people to camp at and start fires and whatnot. I'm actually surprised that it has an entertainment level over a thousand, so it looks like it's actually going to level up again while we're here. I'm not too worried about that. Ooh, I didn't realize you could add policies to parks. So, 
now that I'm done with the park, I wanted to move to the outside of the neighborhood here. Fixing up all along between these homes and the main road, between the neighborhood and the main road over here, as well as with this like tram stop and main park entrance over here. And then wrap around between these two neighborhoods here. And just as an added bonus, I'm going to finish out this little wall with trees and flowers all the way up to this point here. So yeah, this one's going to be a long one. I'm going to be doing a lot of work on this, so I will be right back. So I finished wrapping around this neighborhood and brought in a little bit between these two and finished off this zoo fencing with generic pine and rhododendron flowers between. I think the next spot I'd like to make a little bit prettier or try and hide or add a little bit more detail to is actually right in here in this center section. I don't want to add too much to it, but I would like to add it there a little bit around the outside of this industry area and then between the industry and the high school and geriatrics over here. So yeah, yet again, I'll be right back.
right, so I've now surrounded the industry with some fencing, a lot of trees, rocks, low vegetation, and a lot of tall grass around the around the fencing. And right here where they got that little group of tall grass next to the windmill, that's because I couldn't put the fencing through because the windmill's just a little bit too close. Yeah, and I've even brought it up between the industry and the education and geriatrics in this future bus stop area, I think. I think for the next part, I'm going to finish out geriatrics here and also finish out the education area and get it all detailed. Just a bunch of little small things like upgrading this road, adding a parking lot by it, and seeing if we have a park asset that could fit right in here, and if not, kind of just put some paths down or something. But yeah, I will be right back. Alright, so I finished the elderly ger or geriatrics and the education area over here. So I added these paths around this place because I think from what I understand they try to keep the elderly people who are stuck there active. And so I figured the paths going in a circle would be great for them to walk. I also put down some fencing here. Because I understand that sometimes the elderly might try to run off or whatever. Now, we can't exactly put gates on this, but, you know, I'm doing the best I can with that. And I decided to go with the redwoods as the trees around here, and I wanted to keep the vegetation pretty sparse. The redwoods, because, you know, redwoods are ancient, and to continue off of the theme of how we were choosing the trees in the education area. Over here, I felt the redwoods were, ac were, were an accurate kind of pick. And I didn't want any low vegetation because who knows, the elderly might try and wander off the path. And if there's a bunch of like plants and vegetation and whatnot, they could injure themselves or something. And I also added a bunch of parking out front because you never know. They might have their family members try and come visit them. Or they could just be only coming for like a one-time doctor's appointment or something. 
when they could actually live out in the town. So lots of parking just for any sort of reason or anything. Any reason. Then over here in the education area, I actually moved all the parking over to this right hand side, extended this road back. And I put a plaza with park benches here, kind of like the, maybe, I, I remember when I was in, in school, we called it, we called it the quad. It was basically just where you had lunch and whatnot. So I figured that would be kind of a nice addition to this high school, bring out this kind of park area over here with park be or picnic benches and whatnot. And then I actually extended out the elementary school by just a little bit here and added a bunch of trees and vegetation around it and I finished out by this um, gym here with the same theme from the public library of continuing out the wild conifers and some vegetation around them I also added in a bunch of paths such as right here just so that way they could easily swap over and around and whatnot although it doesn't look like they're actually using this path to get to that str uh, street on the right but I tried, but you can see they're using this one over here. That helps them easily cut through, especially I think there's a bus stop over here. And there was something I didn't mention about the uh, vegetation and trees around the industry area. Do we have a fire? Oh my goodness. Yep, we do have a fire. And you can see our fire helicopters hard at work. You can see they are the ones that put out the forest fires. Alright. Well, something I didn't say about the um, trees that I put around the industry areas. I tried to pick a lot of tall ones. And I tried to make them dense enough so that way if you were a person standing down in this park, you wouldn't see the industry area. And I also put a fence around it. And I also put some tall grass around that as well. To just kind of add into that. But yeah, that's the education and geriatrics as well as industry and this neighborhood over here. Now I'm going to go ahead and add some vegetation right in here in between this neighborhood and the main road and also some sparser vegetation with a pathway between these neighborhoods on the left and the future town hall area. I want to keep it somewhat open because I do want the people in City Hall to be able to see the neighborhoods over here. I think that would be a good idea. Oh, I guess the fire is over. The helicopters are going back to the depot. And I'm also going to... Oh, there's another helicopter going out. All right, another fire. Anyways, so I'd also like to finish up this area in between the industrial and... The city hall area. I think adding these fences was a mistake, although maybe not because city hall I think is like two stories or something like that and the government offices I think are more than that. So they'd be able to see over the fence and if you were at ground level you wouldn't have to worry about looking in on the industry. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and finish up this little area from here over into the industry and I will be right back.
Looks like we have a, uh, a knit industry truck that's trying to sneak through. I think we're going to have to go into this one and also add a heavy traffic ban as well. Trying to be Mr. Sneaky Sneaky there, forestry truck? I don't think so. I think that's about all the places I wanted to add some vegetation to. I did go a lot heavier this time than I did around the initial areas. I really wanted to kind of separate these areas, make the make them feel a little bit more, I guess a little bit more expensive, especially since this one neighborhood we built is for upper management and the other ones for supervisors and also to kind of separate the processing industry from being visible from the surrounding area, even though it's right there. Some There's a couple things I wanted to note this time around in case you guys are interested in the city and whatnot. One of the things is I wanted to know what our budget was because I was tired of it jumping around all the time. I mean, I saw that our bank balance was increasing, but obviously our weekly budget that the game reports was all over the place. Sometimes it was negative, sometimes it was extremely positive. So I let the game run for about five in-game years. I didn't save that save. I just, that was a completely separate save. We'll pretend that's like an alternate timeline or something. But I let it run for about five in-game years. And then I compared the ending balances and divided it up by the number of days. Well, anyways. I did a little bit of quick math, and it turns out at the time we were around 6700 per week in income. And I assume since we put down a few park assets and pathways and things like that in this, in this part, we're probably closer to around 6500 maybe a little under. The reason why I wanted to know our budget was because I wanted to know what to do going forward. I think right now we're sitting around a population of 6,000, and so to have only about 6,500 in weekly income, I'm not sure if I'm comfortable with doing certain things like a pedestrian area or an airport just yet. So I think for the next part we're just going to be focused on expanding our population and trying to hit the next milestone. I believe it's 8,000. So luckily, unlike this time where we had to double our population, we just have to add about another 2,000 more people. And I'm also going to be advancing our industry and possibly including a little bit of the other industries of mining and oil. I'm not going to have them have any of the raw resource production. I'll just be importing all of those raw resources. So I'm hoping that in the next milestone we get some kind of other method besides highways to import and export goods. Just so that way we can help relieve those are just so we can help relieve that infrastructure a little bit. The reason why I want to include those two different industries is so that way we can start including other unique buildings with from our current industries, our forestry and our farming, because some of those require plastics and glass and a few things like that. And you can only obtain those from having the other industries in your city. Now that will explode our income in the short term. It'll absolutely give us a ton more money just by having more unique factories. So I think that's what I'd like to do going forward is just try and reach the next milestone and at the same time trying to obtain more unique factories. 
But yeah, I think that's about it. I'm really hoping and praying that we get a another method of exporting goods. But yeah, it'll be alright. I'm excited. I'm kind of nervous, but hopefully it'll be okay. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Só e